Thank you all for joining us tonight for this important discussion. A lot of work went into planning this upcoming discussion. I want to express my appreciation to Ori and Allison from the Staten Island JCC, Scott and Mandy from Kojo, Staten Island, to council members Dinowitz, Hanks, and Carr, and all of their staff. Now, as one of the few non-Staten Islanders in the room, who am I and why am I here? My name is Noam Gilbord, and I serve as the COO of the Jewish Community Relations Council of New York, the JCRC. I took this job in 2016 because it afforded me a rare and unique opportunity as far as Jewish communal jobs go. In this capacity, I have the genuine privilege to plan and organize study tours to Israel for diverse groups of faith leaders, college presidents, and elected officials. And the best part <coughs> is that I also get to accompany them, which my wife doesn't like very much. <laughs> In the past few months alone, the JCRC has brought study tours to Israel that included DEI officers from local colleges, the CUNY Chancellor and 12 CUNY College Presidents, a delegation of Bronx community leaders, including Congressman Richie Torres, Borough President Vanessa Gibson, and VA Garcelle Clark, and most importantly, we brought a delegation of New York City Council members to Israel this past December. <laughs> Some of our Jewish organizations have very similar trips. JCRC New York is committed to a boutique approach to our study tours. We tailor each itinerary to the specific needs and interests of the participants. Now, before we get into our panel discussion, it's important that we contextualize this particular study tour for the council. This was our first city council study tour since 2018. We usually do one every two years, and our 2020 trip was canceled due to um, a pandemic. In the meantime, the New York City Council saw a massive amount of turnover amongst its membership in the 2021 election. Of the 51 seats on the council, forgive me if I get my numbers wrong, 12 members from the previous council remained, and there were 39 new members. We also saw a major, city, a major citywide drive to elect women, which brought us a first time member majority female council with 31 members. That election also saw a massive pressure campaign by the DSA, the Democratic Socialists of America, to get pledges from candidates that if elected, they would not travel to Israel. In fact, the DSA's foreign policy section and its questionnaire for candidates included just two questions, two questions only. The first asked candidates if they supported the boycott, divestment, and sanctions move against Israel, and if not, why? And the second and final question asked them, do you pledge not to travel to Israel if elected to city council in solidarity with Palestinians living under occupation? I note again, this was the only foreign policy issue that the DSA asked about, the only one. While two or three council members were elected, as DSA supported candidates, I believe that this effort to single out Israel may have had a chilling effect on some council members. In fact, as I began recruiting for this study tour, it became clear that an early draft of our itinerary was leaked to groups who opposed our study tours. Several council members received communications asking them to cancel their participation in the trip. Now, all this being said, 12 council members traveled with us on this study tour which means it was full, that's what we had the budget for, and it was quite a diverse group, and it was the largest delegation of council members to join a study tour that we've ever had. <laughs> we had representation from every borough, male and female, Gen Xers and millennials, folks who were black, Latino, Asian, white, Catholic, non-denominational, Christian, secular, and even a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make a special shout out to, to my Jew, uh, Council Member Eric Benowitz, who co led the study tour with me in his capacity as chair of the New York City Council Jewish Caucus. He's worked with me. Without Councilman Benowitz's leadership and the assistance of the Council's Chief Jewish Advisor, Kesat Chosina, uh, the study tour would not have gone forward. Simple as that. So, what happened on the study tour? What am I actually contextualizing? We covered a lot of ground. We visited spiritual and historic sites, including the Sea of Galilee and Capernaum where Jesus spent his early years preaching. In Jerusalem, we spent time in the old city where we ascended the Temple Mount. 
to learn about the complex history of that site and its holiness to the three Abrahamic faiths. And we visited the Church of Holy Sep uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, and of course the Western Wall too. We visited strategic sites, including the Israeli border with Gaza and the Israeli-Lebanese border, where we saw the entrance to a Hezbollah tunnel intended to be used by Hezbollah fighters to kidnap and kill Israeli soldiers and civilians. While there, this is interesting. One Hezbollah agent popped up over the 20-foot-high concrete barrier and began videotaping us. You'll hear it in the newspaper in some months, so you'll remember this talk. While the um, Israeli army jeeps were immediately sent to our location, we learned about the social, and another issue, we learned about the socialized health care system in Israel, how it caters to all citizens regardless of religion, race, gender, socioeconomic status, or other categories. We even had a lengthy discussion about how abortion access is easily granted in Israel, a pressing discussion recognizing how the issue is used like a political football here in the U.S. We held a Shabbat dinner. We visited Masada. We floated in the Dead Sea, and we dined in Jerusalem's Machana Yehuda marketplace. I'm sure, I'm sure a story you may have heard about that a little bit later, too. We got to learn about how the Israeli transportation system works how Haredi Jews view themselves within society, and how Israeli democracy is so different than our two-party system here in America. We also met with leaders of Jewish-Arab coexistence efforts towards shared society. We visited the Israeli-Arab Community Center in Iksal and the Jewish-Arab Community Center in the mixed city of Haifa. We learned what it's like to be Israeli-Arab or a Palestinian citizen of Israel, a minority living within a Jewish majority and how all Israelis can move forward to create a level playing field for Israeli Jews and Israeli Arabs together. We also visited Ramallah, and we met with Dr. Khalid Shikanti, who runs the Palestinian Center for Social Policy and Survey Research, who spoke with us about Palestinian attitudes towards Israel and incentives for peace. Given the diversity of our group, there were a lot of deep conversations about how different communities view the role that race plays within Israeli society and Israeli-Palestinian relations. And one of the highlights of this trip was an authentic evening exploring Israeli, uh, sorry, exploring Ethiopian Jewish heritage and integration within Israeli society. At Bake, the Ethiopian Israeli Heritage Center in Tel Aviv, Ashahir Araro, who if you're on Instagram, check her out at Black Jewish Magic, mm -hmm. uh, spoke of her family's protection of their Judaism for thousands of years in Ethiopia, thinking that they were the last Jews on earth and if they had succumbed to the rulers' commands to convert Judaism would be lost for us. Hmm. She spoke about how generations of Ethiopian Jews fought and died to preserve their Judaism and how their black skin did not protect them from anti-Semitism. <laughs> Upon arrival to Israel, I remember Shagher saying the one thing that shocked her grandmother more than anything else was learning about the existence of white Jews. Oh. <laughs> we also visited Yad Vashem, to learn about the Holocaust and its impact on Israeli society and American Jewish society. I remember leaving the Children's Memorial and watching council members Althea Stevens and Kevin Riley break down and cry at Councilman Benowitz. Race and religion didn't matter at that moment. They were all parents of children and they understood the unmistakable horror of the murder of one million Jewish children. To conclude, JCRC conducted this study tour as an attempt to break down those complex social, political, and religious issues and provide human faces to better understand the issues that Israelis face on a regular basis. It also enabled the council members to better understand a major part of Jewish identity, no matter what one's personal opinions about Israel happen to be. It was a pleasure traveling with these three council members in particular and their colleagues. <laughs> and JC, oh, oh, no matter what they say, oh, checks in the mail. And, JC, and JCRC looks forward to bringing another council delegation to Israel in the not too distant future. In fact, I'll say uh, during President's Week, we're bringing a delegation of 12 New York State Assembly members. So now, without further delay, please welcome the moderator for the day, Mr. Scott Moore. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for coming, everyone. Have a great night. Thanks. <laughs>